and welcome ladies and gentlemen to our next week of coverage. My name is Steven Return Johnson and I am here with the SRF on the cast for today's Timo Cup action. We got two good teams coming to you live. South Web Baptist, basically a normal now on our stream versus Delaware University. But first of all, SRF, how's it going? It's going pretty well. How about you? Not too bad. Always happy to be back on the uh, C Lowell cast. Certainly, we are getting a little bit of a lull in the action from our C Lowell conference playoffs. So, we're throwing right back over to some Group 2 Team O Cup playoff series. And I believe this is actually our round of eight. So, uh, definitely some good matchups coming on through here as we will be having second seeded, uh, third seeded rather, Southwest Baptist University versus six seeded University of Delaware. Yeah, and uh, we, we've seen Southwest Baptist play a couple times, and I, I feel like we've actually seen them grow throughout the year. So like, I'm really kind of excited to see how well they do this game or which Southwest Baptist we actually get to see because they do show up sometimes, and sometimes they're a little, <laughs> little on edge. Yeah, most certainly so. And, I mean, these are two teams who were coming into the season with very different expectations. I mean, looking over at the Southwest Baptist squad, we've covered them twice, and I believe once versus Missouri, the other one versus... Missouri, Truman the other one versus State last week, I believe. Augustana. Augustana. South of Baptist and Augustana was our, I believe, actually week one matchup. So definitely these guys going quite a ways back in our programming. But uh, th this is a new group of five guys who had no experience with each other. They came together, made it through t with a four and two run, just being knocked out in the fifth round, it looks like. A one, two, devastating loss to Kansas State. Definitely looking for a little bit of redemption here in the Team Oak Cup. Yeah, it's just always hard to get knocked out of a the regular season when you're just kind of cruising along and end up being as like a third seed stuff like that. It just gets really, it, it can put you down. But obviously, it's nice to have something like the Timo Cup where people get a chance to try and play back in. Certainly so. And on the other side of the rift, we do have University of Delaware, and these guys were coming into this year with a lot of expectations. Officially, they ended the season three and three, just going out of the group stage. Uh, with losses to Stony Brook through an FF, John Hopkins 1-2, and, and then Maryland in Week 5. So these these are guys who are feeling a little bit down, but they want to get back. They want to show that they are one of the top teams here in the region. Yeah, and as you said, losing losing some of those games can put you, especially towards the end there, losing two weeks in a row. It's just kind of, you get that last week victory 2 over Syracuse, which is nice, but uh, making some headway here from the Team O Cup, hoping to get out of these rounds and hopefully get into those play-ins and that's where you make a name for yourself is if you can't get through beating some of the bigger schools you got to get through these Timo cup rounds and then that's it's your shot really exactly and for those of you guys who are new to watching our Timo cup coverage let's just break it down quickly how it works so the last six weeks and actually believe two weeks before uh we were going through our group stages here at ulo or c -Lol, rather it's got the c now please please refer to it as c -Lol. but uh, with CLO, you have a six-week Swiss format. Any team who did not finish 5-1 and one or 6-0 and zero did not make those conference playoffs, so all of them were given a free spot into one of our three Timo Cup brackets where we are still in that second group. Top teams, I believe, top four, so win here will get you into that prizing, are all prized with RP. So certainly nice to take away from the end of the season, nice to set up a run for potentially next season, uh, and definitely a lot of experience still left to be gained. Yeah, exactly. And it's like I said, every mention that I keep liking to put it out there is it's a really good thing to have another kind of redemption tournament for these guys because it gives you more experience and they get you that chance to, you know, it just kind of grow over time. And that's a lot of what these teams need to do is just kind of keep playing and get that experience under their belt. So next season they can just go for those top two spots in the conference. Certainly so. You see so many of these colleges kind of come out of nowhere to make really big runs. I think the one for me this year has to be Lord's University over in the north, coming out of the north as that fourth seed. And basically, we hadn't really heard about them before. All of these teams looking to be those next big forces in their region. But for now, we're going to have to focus on this upcoming match. And we are on the 8.4 patch. And also, Kaisa will finally be enabled for play. So curious to see if we get any mid laners, any junglers, maybe some ADCs pulling that one out yeah it could be a, a very handy pocket pick to some but uh if you look at the uh overall win rate of a uh, new champion right now like kaisa you probably might try and avoid it unless one of these teams has probably put in if they put in a lot of practice in it it might be better than it uh than before but it, it it's kind of a gimmick pick i feel like right now <laughs> 
Certainly so. Maybe not with the most success, especially looking at the solo queue letters, but uh, there is a little bit of room for leeway as we are going to be in a best of three. Winner moving on to face. Let me pull up the exact team here. Moving on to face seven seeded Missouri Baptist University in those semifinals, hoping for a spot in the grand finals themselves. And obviously still that extra little bit of prizing, still the little extra bit of takeaway as we are going to be getting into our match quite shortly here. Other things on 8.5 are the Hand of Baron changes. Uh, I've been uncoupled from the uh, Banner of Command and does look like we will be getting into the action hopefully sometime soon. There we go, thrown on over to the game. And like you said, that banner command, Baron buff nerf, so it doesn't, I believe it was multiplicatively stacking is what it was. So you just had like your turn right. feature. You got Baron and you use the banner command minion to let it shoot the tower and watch its health drop like a quarter every time it gets shot. Oh, okay. Can you please, oh shoot, 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 shoot. I did it again. Um. What's up? All right, if someone uh, has coast carry. Okay, so I accidentally left the lobby. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna need to get them to uh, quickly stop the champs. Like, thankfully, got a little bit of time here. Um, uh, but uh, who do you need to talk to? Anyone. <laughs> they just need to stop the lobby. I, I can't talk to anybody without. I guess I can just try and message them. Yeah, that would be that would be the way to go on forward. Is this is now I believe the second time I've done this, and uh, th this is not how we like to start the streams. Yeah, exactly. Worst, worst comes to worst, we should be able to scream share. So even even if we should be fine. Yeah, I mean, we will get happens. you guys the game one way or another. Uh, throwing over to you guys in chat if any of you. Yes. All right. Perfect. Looks like we caught them in time. Uh, thank you very much to the squads. Yes. And there we go. One will not be happening again anytime soon. Yep. We're loading back in the lobby. So uh, apologies on my side, but we will be getting back into those matches and. Also, a little bit more time to talk about this 8.5 patch. I know we just hit on the Banner of Command, the Hand of Baron buffs, but we're also seeing a few different balance changes, like the uh, like we do have Zoe coming back into the meta, some buffs in the mid lane. Top lane Swain is just now on the board, and a lot of more things going on over, and possibly the most impactful one for me has to be the changes not only to Warmogs, but also to the... Uh, to the Warmogs and also to the Cinder Hulk, really making it harder for these tank junglers to actually get to that big HP port, uh, part that they want to be at. Yeah, the, the health nerfs across the board is something that a lot of people, I feel like, have been waiting for in some instances because they just prefer to not have a tank meta, but it does hurt a lot of teams when you're... That, that was, like, the core of what was going on for a long time was the tank, the tank junglers, tank support tank top laners going with the more mods and things like that so it, it it's kind of it puts pressure on them and uh junglers in general to try and keep their right. options open yeah. as we see kha'zix get banned right away yeah certainly so and a lot more of the fighter a lot more of the runic echo style junglers have really been coming to fruition okay see what these teams do opt into of course you still have stuff like the uh, Zach really top priority right. olaf's making his way back especially when you look over at the lcs which is going on right now also on that 8.5 patch. Uh, so definitely a lot of options opening up here, but then you gotta really figure out where do you fit in those tanks, if not in the jungle, maybe towards the top side, maybe into the support position, but we are gonna be getting through these next few bands, and Kaisa will not be making it through as Southwest, ba Southwest Baptist, rather. They don't wanna see this on the rift. Yeah, Southwest Baptist just going with the, the, the safe plan here and just banning away the new new here or new champion to keep everybody level there no no surprises there going on most certainly now as we do finish out our last ban of that first rotation we will be banning away the brawn which has just really been a staple first pick of supports when you just want something big you want some beef and you just want something you can basically blind pick but that will leave skarner up for southwest baptist university yeah, Braum, very strong pick, very good at body blocking, dealing with, uh, you know, his shield able to break uh, projectiles coming in. Uh, pretty much an insta-counter to an Orin player, so obviously you want to get him out of the way. Ooh. Zion right. Rakan, yep, here it comes. Now here's the thing for me, of course, Zion Rakan have been the top priority ADC support duo, especially with Zion just feeling like the number one ADC as of late with Tristana receiving some nerfs, even Varus starting to fall out of meta a little bit, and Kaelin still being a little bit of a fringe pick, 
But here's the thing, it's into the Skarner, who very easily can catch out Rakan on the Zengages, can catch out Zaya if she's not playing safely, and they're going to have to be very careful about that, especially if Dare Delaware wants to really double down on this bot lane centric style of play. And this is exactly what I wanted to see, or I figured was going to happen when they hover the Morgana. Morgana, Caitlyn lock in immediately to counter the Zyra Khan. Kind of a standard thing, I want to say now. It seems like it's coming more standard. You're going to get Caitlyn for the range because you can bully Zaya early. And with Morgana, it makes Rakan really hard to dive in. So that's another thing shutting down the Rakan, as you said, with the Skarner, able to kind of ult really easily and grab him away. And Zach comes in for the other, uh, for the side of Delaware too, which is another engaged champion. Without it a doubt, there is now so much control on this bottom portion of the map for Southwest Baptist. And it's going to be the other tank of Zach being locked in there for Delaware. So Jungler's head on the board, still needing that top lane matchup, still needing the mid lane as well as... Honestly, the top lane matchup has felt like Gnar and the Gnar counters. You've seen Cyan rise up, you've seen a little bit of Vladimir, a little bit of Alawi, and a lot of the new Swain. But that Gnar is already going to be getting removed. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what these teams want to go for the top lane. Because, again, with C-Law and stuff like that, you know, you don't always stick to the meta. Some of these people will kind of have their, their, their power picks, their pocket picks that they like to do. Or they might even be a one trick, who knows. But normally they get banned out. But we could see something like a Jax. Obviously, Camille taken off the board right there as well. Uh, Camille is something we also see a lot, uh, I believe. J4 was picked out on top lanes as well. I don't believe this was the it was Southwest Baptist that did it, but it could have. I that is something that we have seen throughout the year. You used well, certainly so in top lane, definitely a very mobile role. And already with Braum banned away on the side of Delaware, it does make you think that they might be prioritizing the Orn for themselves, but no, they're gonna go with Swain. Yeah, Swain is definitely gonna be the pickup there because, like you said, everybody seems to finally have jumped on the Swain train here, doing a lot of damage, being able to kind of sustain your own way and kind of carry a game again from a top lane position on a on a champion that's not just a tank in some instances, but a very heavy damage outputter if you use the abilities correctly. Exactly, and unless Delio on the Morgana most likely is on point on absolutely everything he hits. There are so many options for CC on the side of Delaware. Zach, Rakan, Zaya, if you lock down somebody, Swain's able to pull them on in, making that very scary team fights coming out from the side of Delaware, but keep on going. We will be getting the, not quite counter, but the sustain, the scaling out pick in the gangplank, something that's really been falling off as of late, but has found its time to shine time to time again. Yeah, gangplank kind of fits that role of he he's the scaler he's there to late game carry he just kind of struggles early on in game stuff like that it's just he has to be in a lane where he can't really get bullied uh it'll be interesting to see how this swain uh gameplay goes matchup goes unless this jace pick comes through and then 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 uh there could be some interesting places where people go certainly so and yeah i mean both the swain and the jace are viable flex picks between each role and if they wanted to bully out that gameplay in the top lane there is no better pick to do that then with the Jace itself, but in the end, it does look like Delaware will be settling into that Jace in the mid lane matchup, going up against the early game Venari, and it's going to be Rito God's please on the Swain pulling out that gangplank. Uh, pretty the standard role is, I guess, what we came up here with Swain going to the top lane. So it'll be interesting to see, like I said, the top lane matchup between gameplay and Swain is not something I've seen too much lately, but I feel like it could go either way. It could be a it could be a very skilled matchup. But I, I, again, Swain's still kind of new, so he might also just roll over Gangplank, but I feel like the sustain should keep him in there. Certainly so, and I'm very hard pressed to think of a situation in which Gangplank actually walks out with the lead in that lane, but certainly so, if there's enough play coming up from Master Party, he could just survive the laning phase, he could be able to dip and dodge around the Swain, make sure that he's at least going even, but I mean, all it could take is one good Zack gank, one good Jace Rome that gets this lane rolling, and that brings us to our next point, this mid lane. We haven't seen too many Aries uh, in the 8.4, in the 8.5 meta, certainly coming back just a little bit with those new uh, AP items. Last chapter basically built into anything you could possibly want as a mid laner, uh, but we'll definitely have to see if that's able to impact the map, not only through the lane, but there's certainly a lot of room to roam. Yeah, Justice is going to have uh, a little bit of, uh, to a lot on his plate here. He's going to want to, he's going to have a lot of choices to make. Is he going to try and go for the 1v1s constantly, or is he just going to go for the farm and wait for the Skarner to rotate in? But it's a, a, a big thing that Southwest Baptist is going to have to deal with is the Zac, and I feel like they're going to need to have on par vision. And if they're able to do that, they should have a relatively safe game because they can 
they, they the bot lane should win. That's just how a Caitlyn Morgana works into a Zyrocon. They should be able to bully them early uh, and keep them from uh, trading too well. But we, sh it, it, it can all change in a in an instant when Zach shows up. So I think good vision is the is going to be the key to keep not just top safe, but mid and bottom going the way you want to as Southwest Baptist. Exactly. So is there's just so much playmaking potential here. Uh, we gotta start looking exactly who really wins this out in the early game, who wins this out in the mid game, who wins this out in the late game, and uh, certainly the 80 mid laner coming out of Delaware with, I guess you could say, some magic damage coming out of Zach, coming out of the Swain, but a majority of this damage being very physical, that definitely puts Delaware on a clock where they need to make these fights happen early. Yeah, they don't want to let the scaling happen. Obviously, any team that you're playing against that has a game plank, you probably don't want to let them scale for very long because everyone knows game plank turns into this uh, very scary monster man once he gets a couple items rolling on there and starts uh, half-healthing people with barrels. It gets very, very hectic once he has those items and very easy to land a lot of AoE damage. So, obviously, the... Uh, the side of Delaware wants to probably try and keep the pace and hope I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of top ganks as well because if you can keep a keep a game plank down it it, it just makes them struggle you can tilt the player pretty easily because they just want to farm uh, it's just one of those things as a game plank player you have to understand that you're going to be put under a lot of pressure most of the time because you're not very strong in the early game Mm -hmm. And we've seen that being abused time and time again. My personal favorite so far has been the Yorick counter to Gangflame because he can't k cleanse out of the uh, prison he puts you in. But certainly with the Zac, with the Swain, both having so much in the terms of CC and damage, there's definitely a lot of room for Gangplank to be put behind. But then you also need to start considering that other portion of the map as well with the Ari, the Caitlyn, the Morgana. There's just so much early game playmaking here that Southwest Baptist, if they get off to an early start, they could just never stop. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a coin flip for coin flip for Titan Dog here on what he wants to do. Is he going to try a lot to counter the Zac, or is he really going to try and get his mid and bot lane rolling smoothly because that would also draw the attention of zach towards him so kind of uh, the vision game i feel like is going to be very important here and with those vision changes with no more uh, um oh my gosh i just forgot the name of the item for jungle wards that's terrible <laughs> the tracker's knife no more tracker's, tracker's knife, knife. Yeah, no, no more, more vision might make it easier for zach to make these plays i mean you got to think about that there's just less wards on the on the map to see him so it might be a you know, a nice, nice, easy thing for Into the Dusk from Delaware here to try and make some plays on uh, top or mid lane, I feel like. I feel like the bot lane of uh, Southwest Baptist is a little safe, but it, it, they do have a bot lane that can force out the Black Shield. So we'll see how it goes. Certainly so, because the first thing you have to think of when you see the Rakan and Zaya bot lane is just engage after engage after engage. I mean, Sure, there it, you can block a good amount of that with the Black Shield, but it has to be so constant. You basically have to keep your finger just pressed down halfway on that E key if you're going to try to deny absolutely everything away. And even Zaya by herself is still a very formidable carry. You get her on those two item spikes, she's basically ready to team fight from that point forward. Does look like we are going to be getting into our matchup here with the first game of our set. We do have Southwest Baptist University versus University of Delaware. Well, the game looks like it's about to be underwear shortly. In just a moment. I apparently have to learn how cameras work. There we go. <laughs> all right. We are all good to go. Hey! Oh, hey! JK, we have the pause to start off this game, so maybe just a little bit more time to check out what everyone's gone, as we are actually now able to see everybody, what they picked up on those runes. And as such, you know, first thing for me has to be Rito Gods, please, in the top lane. Did go with the summon Aries. Normally, you do see the change back and forth between a summon Aries for the poke damage, or whether you go for phase shift for that laning fight, for the team fighting phase. So, Rito Gods and just the side uh, of the University of Delaware does seem like they want to play more throughout that early lane. Yeah, it makes sense to put a lot of pressure on that gangplank again. He's not the strongest early, as we've mentioned already. And Swain, uh, with the, the help of Zach, could probably pick off this gangplank really easy. They have a lot of CC in their kits put together. So I feel like Master Party is going to be looking at uh, a lot of pressure coming his way here shortly. And then the next thing I see is Titan Dog. It did go Predator on the Skarner as well. Oh, but lordy, that, those those champions can go quite fast. Gardner with Predator, give him Righteous Glory as well, and he just zooms down a lane uh, directly at East Coast, directly at Harrison. 
And Jace, Jace plus Zaya is a backline, sure. The Zaya does have a lot of mobility, a lot of uh, potential for getting out of those engages, but... I mean, Jace, he's got very little. I mean, he can swipe someone away, but that's not going to last for too darn long. As finally, we do get into this game number one with both teams really looking to make a statement here early. Uh, and as you mentioned that uh, Jace not really having a way to peel for himself, you know what really shuts that down? Is when you black shield your Skarner before he goes in and just picks out whoever he wants because no one can stop him. That's going to be something I, I'm curious to see if uh, Southwest Baptist gets a lead here, if they don't utilize that a lot because it's just it's basically a guaranteed pick if you can't break the black shield in time yeah but so far so oh, they're gonna flash on forward to leo not going to complete the dark binding and that will in fact just be the flash for flash but i mean when you're talking about how you help out a gangplank through this laning phase making sure that swain is no flash that's gonna help quite a bit yeah it looks like southwest baptist had that in mind they knew they they know already that gangplank's probably gonna have a tough time in this lane so they decided to do the five-man room top and they force out the flash. I mean, that might be just what they're looking for, just to help keep Master Party safe early on. Uh, a little bit of vision does get traded up. They actually don't invade to ward up the red of Delaware, but uh, the Rakan from Delaware did, did sneak in there and ward up for his team. So a little bit of vision change and then the flashes, but we'll see how it goes now. When they look like everybody kind of standarded it out now. And after that vision change, it does mean Into the Dusk will have knowledge of where Titan Dog is starting, whereas Titan Dog, he has no idea that could be Into the Dusk starting top lane, ending bot. It does look like they will be mimicking each other, and even on top of that, we've seen a lot of Zacks take some of these more awkward routes, starting at the Wolves especially, but no, he's going to take the bot lane leash, he's going to start at that blue side, and hey, maybe we're going to see a lot of fighting around top side as well. Yeah, we'll see how the, how the rotations go. It looks like... Uh... Zack is going to go for the Wolves, and Skarner is going to go over to his blue. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how this works. Yeah, very normal early game clear coming out of the junglers. Basically, for the entirety of last season, it's just start with your uh, buff on one side, go to the Wolves, and then finish the buff on the other side. It's a nice way to hit level 3 without really a lot of resistance. So yeah, uh, do, yeah, expect that that to be, do expect that to be mimicked on both sides of the rift here today. Is it definitely a Skarner with just a little bit more on the front foot. We should be able to get the first gank off here, but I'm uh, not sure if between Gangplank and Skarner, if they really have enough CC to really get anything done. Yeah, and if you if you notice some of the trades that we're seeing in the bot lane, Delia throwing out those bindings, trying to catch people out, uh, you can see already that the, some of the health pots have already been used from the side of this uh, Delaware bot side with the Zyra Rakan not doing so much, but here comes Ooh, Time Dog. Top. He's going to be all the way up on top. Remember, Riot God has absolutely no smash, no smite, nothing to get away, and he's going to be dropping down. First Blood going over to Master Party on the Gangplank. I mean, that's the best possible start of a game that you could ask for if you're on the side of Delaware. Yeah, I, I believe he actually got the, uh, par the, the parlay kill too, so he actually got the extra five gold on top of it. <laughs> So that's that is the like, most important like, part of that play. Perfect. Yes, exactly. The five extra gold. But no, beautiful rotation from Titan Dog, knowing the flash was down, going up there and securing a kill for somebody that should have a hard bot lane or a hard hard matchup in the top lane with, against the Swain. But now he's probably sitting pretty as again the poke comes out from the bot lane. And a lot of trading on this boss site as East Coast carry is just eating binding after binding. Did have to start the lane off with that door and shield just for the extra bit of sustain. He also does still have the extra pot, but uh, certainly Delaware can be looking pretty darn rough on this bottom side. Curious to see if Into the Dusk is going to be able to influence this bot lane matchup in any way so far, but Time Dog, he's already back to the top side. He's jumping on in. Once again, Rito, absolutely no flash available. Time Dog, he's basically already under towers. He does finally get the smite, get the shot. Master Party's gonna drop incredibly low though off the back side of that push. Master Party now has absolutely no flash as well. Into the Dusk gonna be flashing on forward, jumping through. Ryan's this stretching strike onto Master Party. One more pullback, and that could be Pariah God. Now, he has to be careful in that one, too, and that looks like it'll just be a one-for-one one at the moment. Into the dusk, he is not done just yet. It's Tyne Dog. He's scaling on away. No movement over from the mid lane. Does mean that will be a straight one-for-one one trade by Harrison. He wants into a little bit of this action, too, but nothing goes down further in the mid lane. Yeah, lots of trading back and forth in the mid lane damage wise. Ari landing that charm did a lot of damage. Binding still being thrown out from bot lane. Lots of pressure being put there. But uh, we did see Into the Dark make the counter play as he comes in mid. Stretching strike lands in the mid lane into the dusk. He tries to put something on Justice, but with absolutely no assist from Harrison. Not really going to turn into too much. Another binding is landed. 
from Delio. Well, and finally they combo that into the trap as well, but East Coast Carry is trying to fight up in this lane two versus one, and uh, that is certainly a very risky proposition. It still looks like Southwest Baptist is going to be pretty on top of this one. Moment. Yeah, like I mentioned, that Caitlyn Morgana lane is just, it's a range, they use that their range to abuse the uh, the shorter range of the Zaya Rakan here in the almost melee support matchup that is Rakan. I guess I call him a melee because he's just, it's not that, it's not very long of an attack, but it, it's very hard to deal with this poke and it, it, it's, it's very oppressive as you can see, as uh, we see East Coast carry starting to fall behind on CS a little bit. Well, here comes the engage, but absolutely nothing lands. Leo does have to flash away. He is ignited for his trouble, and does look like that will, in fact, just be the ignite for flash tray. But DeLeo now down a huge amount of his HP, only taking the refillable potions. That's well, a little bit limited down there, but into the dusk, he is down here as well. Unsure if he was caught out on a ward. He, in fact, was, so they're going to know uh, where this Zack is the entire time through. Dr. Santa has to be careful. Night Stealth not able to land any sort of engage will nullify any threat into the desk was posing. Yeah, the, he obviously was found on a ward there as he came in, and Delio is already there to binding him. Very <laughs> just casual, like, oh, what are you doing over there? You know, it's like, eh, it's not a big deal. But top lane, CS seems to be all right. Mid lane, very even. And then just a slight advantage so far for the Caitlyn over the Zaya, which is to be expected again with that range kind of uh, the, the range advantage. Galen being one of the uh, longest range ADCs in the game, certainly able to put down so much pressure. And then with the counter pick of Morgana into Rakan, it nearly just completely shuts out that lane. Well, I do have to say, in the mid lane, Harrison is getting just a little bit more done. Night Stealth going to be jumping on forward with the W, but he's not getting it locked down by the trap, which means he will survive for now. Ignite goes down, flash forward, dark sent to lands the last auto attack. And it will be the Ignite finding the kill. Time Dog, he's and jumping on in. Binding goes on down. One, two more shots. That will be it. Trap does land as well as Dr. Santa picks up the kill as well. This is now a four to one game in favor for Southwest Baptist. Yeah, and they did use actually have the, the Gangplank ulti there to help out in that fight. So Gangplank with 100% kill, kill participation from the top lane. Feeling good about his life right now. And also, tip, tip the hat there to Titan Dog. He did stop to make sure that Dr. Santa was able to secure that kill, giving him a little bit more of an advantage there in this bot lane matchup, which is he now up 11 CS now. And this just feels like a lack of preparation on the side of University of, Del uh, of Delaware to actually push anyone off. I mean, sure, Into the Dust tries to make a play on Bali, and there wasn't that much setup, and he got absolutely nothing off the back of it. Ooh, but check out this mid lane. Tyne Dog, he does have the ultimate. He does have Impaled. Tyne Dog with absolutely no way to get in there. He doesn't have Flash. Harrison does get ulted on up, but Justice isn't even going to come close to that fight. He's too scared, right? God. And Rito God actually does use the ultimate with no one in range. It's not going to be healing up at all. And all Master Party needs is one good Q to put that one away. Yeah, that was a little bit of an awkward decision there. Trying to get in close to do that damage was Riot God on the swing, but unable to do so. Uh, Master Party's still looking for a little bit of a cheeky barrel there, hopefully, but unable to do so. But he's going to push out the lane, though, for sure. After, uh, you know, like we said, having that extra gold makes it so he's able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the swing early. So uh, Swain kind of struggling. Uh, here comes into the, the dusk with the Elastic Strike. Searching Strike going to be coming out here in just a second. Swain not quite in range, and nothing really does... Striking strike out from into dusk either. Titan Dog does show up around the corner, but it's only just going to be to show into the dusk the way out. Yeah, keeping the top lane safe, as we mentioned, trying to keep him as best they can. Another binding lands on East Coast Carry. Ooh, Leo does go in. He has the ultimate down onto two members. East Coast Carry's got to get away, but the stun goes down, and he finally finds that kill as well. And this bot lane for Southwest Baptist is just on a roll. Two, zero, and one for Dr. Santa. 1-0 and 2 for DeLeo, and that Zyra Khan early rotation is just not paying off. Yeah, this, I, I, it's basically a hard counter matchup, I feel like, at this point. I This is almost exactly how my Morgana, Caitlyn, bot lane games go, is you just abuse the fact that neither Zyra or Rakan can really do anything because they can't engage. Uh, we saw in that fight, though, instead of using the Black Shield onto the Caitlyn there, he just... Uh, 
the Leo used it on himself, so he was able to use the ulti and secure the double stun there, which was really, really helpful right there as well. So a more abuse coming out from this bot lane from Southwest Baptist, and they're looking to get that bottom turret down relatively quickly here. And that's another way to help out your top lane is and get him out of that uh, less favorable matchup. Yeah, but I know he's uh -oh. going on it, but he's going to be pulled under his own tower. Oh, Night Stealth, you try to be cheeky there, but it wasn't going to work. A little bit of a counterplay there in the mid lane into the Duskin Harrison. Do pick off Justice in the mid lane is finally the first real concrete lead for Delaware in some lane comes out as Harrison is just knocking this one down. Yeah, finally we see the the, the fabled Zach gank from the Not Vision, and he just shows up and lands the stun on Ari. And at this point, with how much damage Jace is building up and no armor on Ari, she's gonna get blown up if she gets hit by that shockwave. Yeah, and a lot of work still left to be done by Delaware as well as now with one lane in the advantage, but it doesn't actually matter. Into this, he's gonna be going on in Dark Sh Black Shield is not there just yet. Time Dog shows his face, but he's got no ultimate. Zach's gonna be dropping pretty down low. Cell Division coming on out with absolutely no teleport available to save his life. But that is going down on Dr. Santa. Kill goes across. Finally, DeLeo walking on forward. Has to pop the Zonius to stay alive, but finally finds that now their kill. And one, two more shots. That could be it. Ace in the hole is available, but Dr. Santa doesn't have enough mana to Here pop that one. Is They're just gonna be walking away with a nice two kill advantage off that play. Uh, Harrison just late to the party there. I thought he might be able to get a shot or two off to do some damage, but the good warding from Southwest Baptist makes that happen. Justice clearing out some wards while knowing that the lane part or, or her lane opponent has left. And Master. top lane uh, getting a little hairy right now for Master Party again. Yeah, Reno God's trying to put down some pressure, but that's incredibly hard to do with a gangplank who's under tower. Also, some good moves. Coming out of Master Party does keep him alive. Is now the first tower of the match. Will fall in favor for Southwest Baptist. And I do have to say, with this already almost a 4k gold lead at the 11 minute mark, Southwest Baptist, they're getting all they can hope for. Yeah, and you want to talk about that 4k gold lead. If you look over at the gold values of teams, there's a 2.3 thousand gold lead for the Caitlyn over the Zaya right now. That is just on Caitlyn over Zaya. So this is turning into... Uh, oh, in the mid lane, Justice does have the ultimate to get away if she needs. And yeah, she is going to pop that. Stretching Strike does land, but with absolutely nothing to kiss with. It's not going to go anywhere just yet. Is now, does it look like the Delaware squad is making a bit of a rotation up towards the middle portion of the map. 12 minutes in and absolutely nobody has taken a single glance at our first Mount Drake. And... Fortunately, I don't see that changing anytime soon, but what will change is the lane assignments as Dr. Santa and DeLeo are already making their way up there. Yeah, exactly what you want to do as a Caitlyn. Again, with the trap changes from a long time ago, you're able to lay down those traps and siege turrets uh, almost freely in a lot of instances. So they make that rotation up top as they clear the bot lane turret. They want to keep rolling this bot lane. This bot lane is so far ahead. There'd be no way for uh, Rito Gods, please, on this Swain to be able to go up against them. So they have to switch the Zyra Khan back up the top. But Zyra Khan so far has been doing nothing but struggling against this uh, Caitlyn Morgana, and even when they bring the Zac, they need to come in all together, but here it comes. Dr. Sand is just walking directly into, into the Dusk, who's has to go over the wall. He has the Let's Bounce to get over. He will be channeling that flash away from Dr. Santa. does keep him safe. Time Dog, he's gonna find Harrison in the river, but there's nobody to come with at the moment. There's the strike going on through, an ace in the hole will pull out the kill as once again, another one over for Dr. Santa, who's now 3-0 and 4 on this Caitlyn. Already completed the Infinity Edge, already completed the Berserker's Greaves as well, and yeah, this one's going to be looking incredibly dire, as that was the only last winning member from University of Delaware, and he just fell on that play without any effort. Yeah, it's getting it's getting out of hand right now for Delaware. Uh, this is also something I want to point out. I saw this happen though. Here Ooh, Dr. Santa is good. not going to have the Black Shield, so he will be falling right there on the play. DeLeo looking for the two-man shot, and here's Justice falling through with the play. Uh, the first mid laner to the scene. Ooh, Dark Mining doesn't quite land there. So that will be a bit of a disengage, but still, Delaware, they cannot find any play that's going to put the brakes on this one just yet. Tried quite hard. We're able to find Dr. Santa, but into the dusk. He's not going to go over the wall. Harrison is behind him, so they do have a good amount of pressure to follow this one through. 
Dark Binding does land, but not before the fight actually goes on over. Raido gods, please. Diving under that bot lane tower, but there's the Zonias. There's the Hourglass. Ooh, but it's going to be a trade one for one. Is the stopwatch there worth its weight in gold? Yeah, keep, keeping the Swain under the turret to be able to force the extra kill uh, really helps out the gameplay there. But again, we're seeing why they spent so much time trying to keep Master Party not behind in this lane. Obviously, Swain's still doing his job. He's quite up quite a bit of CS already, too. So uh, doing what he can and keep keep putting the pressure on to try and keep uh, the hopes alive that uh, Swain's going to show up in some of these uh, fights and force the side of Southwest Baptist to really kind of disengage with that huge ulti that Swain has. Certainly so, but he just hasn't been able to find the correct engage yet. He hasn't influenced one of these fights in a major way, and uh, SBU are still sitting very confidently in this matchup. But I do have to say, the one person I really need to see more coming out of here from Delaware is Harrison in the mid lane. I mean, he's got the advantage. He's got 27 CS. He's got two kills over his direct lane opponent, but he's not able to do anything with it. He either needs to find this mid lane tower, or he's got to break it open into another lane. Yeah, he did try to make that roam top, but obviously he got out-rotated last time, and the roam bot from earlier was way too late to do anything. So he's just not finding the right timing, it feels like you said, like you, you've mentioned. He's just not, not doing enough, and we need to see more from him, because he is the one that was winning lane the most. And already the trap line has already begun in the top side of Time Dog. He's going to run into Into the Dusk. Who's camping out here on the top side, but not really able to get much of vision. Justice can get locked down into potentially a 2v2. The teleport comes on out for Rito Gods, but that's just going to be an easy disengage from the side of SBU. And now that's just a teleport for absolutely nothing with SBU holding the TP advantage onto Master Party. But three members on this top side, there's just no way Delaware can hold onto this tower. And that's that that early game pressure that I was mentioning that turns into a snowball lead for your Morgana Caitlyn is uh, fortunately for the side of Delaware they were able to get a kill onto the Caitlyn when the Black Shield was down. But again, it doesn't really matter because she's just going to keep season turret as the fight happens in the middle. Yeah, going back and forth, Harrison trying Ooh. to find the acceleration again. Is that shot might have actually been the killing blow, but uh, good footwork out from Justice means that he will be getting out of that one safely. So in the end, still the hard advantage towards the top side. 3k still going in the favor of University of Delaware, but Baron, I mean, Harold rather already started into the desk. I don't even think he saw it. Uh, he didn't even check. That's kind of a downer there for him. He should have gone over there to at least peek in because they didn't have vision on it and they had no idea where they were. He's pretty easy for him to get out of most fights, but he's a starter. Ultimate so popped in the mid lane. They're looking for into the desk who can't really wind up his E just yet, but he's back in her tower. He is going to be home safe. But still, Delaware, they need to find something that puts them in control of this matchup because when you just look at position for position, they don't have the scaling advantage. I mean, sure, you can wait for the two items completed on East Coast carry, but until then, it's still going to be an incredibly rough ride. Instant Dusk is going to be going right on in. Finds a stretching strike onto two of them, and he finds the front line. Night Stealth is going to be going in as well, but they do pick off Dr. Santa and Mr. Party. They, he is now the next target coming on through. Trying to fight on four, but the... That does come on through as well. Night Cell on the backside is going to be able to get out just in time. Into the Dark, it's also not falling just yet, but Harrison is going to start cleaning this one up as University of Delaware, they finally strike back. Yeah, into the dust with a great flash there to get the uh, the link between the Caitlyn and the Skarner and body slam them in together into the ultimate and everything else to follow up. They do have the damage, fortunately, for the side of Delaware to blow up this Caitlyn like they just did, catching them out at the Dragon, and now they should be able to claim it relatively easily for themselves. Yeah, but Harrison now, he's trying to push on forward. He finds Justice here in the wings. Certainly does have quite the lead on him with four kills to his name, plus that one assist, plus the 33 CS lead as well. And now this might be a pretty easy mid lane siege for Delaware. And oh, Justice, that was just a little bit too aggressive. You stuck around, you're going to pay the price for it. Yeah, and the flash there uh, to save Percy over the wall from the, the Caitlyn ulti. He had to flash behind his teammate so he wouldn't die to it because it would have been really close if that would have hit. But uh, Justice finally gets taken out after some poke there, but uh, they're, they they got the kill, but now they're on the back foot. And here comes Shelly and a very angry Caitlyn. Dr. Santa says, no, you guys want to keep killing me? It's okay, I'll just keep killing your turrets. I killed more <laughs> turrets and you guys have killed me. So let's keep doing this. It's really so narrowed. Being popped there on the mid lane does give the 3-0 tower advantage 
in favor for SBU. And despite that last fight, they're still very comfortably in control of this game. 2.5k gold lead in advantage for them. Harrison going to be looking over for that blue buff as well. But Baron coming up in 27 seconds. Delaware's got to find something to start stalling out this game. Two items on East Coast carry has to be the goal. Yeah, they, they have to get two items on him. But again, we, we keep mentioning it. Uh, that Harrison uh, needs, or Harrison needs to really push his advantage. He is the one that has the huge gold lead. Th that it's very comparable to the Jace lead over Ari. That it is of the Caitlyn lead over the Zaya. So their their gold difference is about the same. So he really needs to keep landing these abilities and uh, helping Delaware work their way back into this game and not let it, this uh, Doctor Santa on his Caitlyn just keep storming through turrets like they don't exist and you know, giving a lot of objectives over. So uh, looking for those picks from Zach and lots of damage out from Herson here is what Delaware really needs to focus on and not giving up any more objectives. But check out that River Vision game. There is absolutely not a single ward for Delaware past that midpoint of the map. But Harrison gonna be going quite aggressive. Night Cell does find the Dazzle plus the engage. And that's going to be going right on over. But now here's the re-engage. Justice going on in. Finds the second kill as well. Time Dog going to be using Impale on to Greedo Gods. And yeah, he's even locked up. Absolutely nowhere left to go as SPU. They are just completely rolling over this matchup. One member, two members actually still alive into the desk. Plus East Coast carry. So uh, it does look like SPU will be going with the shove mid lane call. Baron on the board, but don't want to give it up just yet. Or maybe a little bit frayed of throwing that Baron buff over in a steel attempt, which honestly could bring him right back. Yeah, there's no reason to force it, I guess, when there's Zach still there who can just attempt the smite steal. So, uh, and he actually, Zach has the level advantage too. He Into the Dust does advantage. actually find the engage. No members up just yet. Is it actually, but, here comes Knight Stealth, but Tower does go right on down into the Dusk. Is definitely going to be punished for that one. SP, they're not able to get the Baron buff just yet, but with four towers, they're going to have so much control of this portion of the map. Uh, the biggest thing left wondering me, for me from that last fight from Delaware is they go in with Night Stealth to get the Dazzle and and the Grand Entrance and everything like that all going in, but they're unable to actually catch Dr. Santa. They're only able to get D Leo, and then the counter engage comes in, and they just get crushed uh, into the Dusk wasn't in the fight either. He is their extra CC. They need to start chaining these CCs, and if, they, if they're able to do that, uh, if, if he was there, I feel like they catch Dr. Santa out, and they get both of them, and then they're able to fight the the, the remaining members of Southwest Bathurst coming in. But here comes Another the guy. Another into the dusk. We do have the Black Shield on the Dark Santa, so he will be staying alive for now, but Time Dog looking for the re-engage. That's going to be tanky enough now that he can survive on through, but Night Stealth and Company Rito God does have to be just a little bit more careful. And yeah, going off of what you just said as well, there is not too much in the tanks for Delaware. They have so much burst potential, especially out of Harrison, along with the CC that comes out of every other member. But they gotta find that perfect engage, find Dr. Santa, find Justice right off the front of the bat. So you, there is just no resistance anymore. Yeah, they, they have to play together. They can't keep trying to force these things with just as with just a Rakan engage. They need to have the Zack there with it, I feel like. And that's where they found the success, that early fight where they got the kill on the Caitlyn, but they ended up getting four kills off of. That's the things they need to look for. It's the double CC or, the, uh, like, you know, the Reconnell. He's just so strong with that hard engage. As soon as you get that knockup from Zach to follow it up, you can probably, you can CC multiple people for a, a good couple seconds there. And that's what they need to be looking for because Person does the damage to kill people. He almost killed Dr. Santa by himself in that last dive attempt by Into the Dust. Uh, but again, they just need to go in all is one. And I feel like they could still make a play. They just need to work for it as a team. Yeah, a little bit of slowing down here at the moment as Dark Santa does try to wrestle away mid lane control. But Delaware, they've been slowly creeping that vision line up around this Baron buff. They want to try to start coming on back. And there's the engage. Actually, into the dust, going to go straight for Dr. Santa. But Dust just completely whiffs on absolutely everything. Dark Santa going to try to push on forward because this man does so much damage. Ace and Lil goes on out, but that's not going to be enough for the killing blow onto Into the Dust. But it's not that far off as now. SBU, they may be trying to force around this Baron Pit, knowing that Into the Dusk has to back off. We'll have to see if they actually do start up this Baron. They still have the, the teleport available for Master Party if they want to do so, but it does look like we are going to be getting a little bit of a Fnatic-style Death Bush here. But no, they're going to push off at the last second and just settle for taking control of the area. 
Yeah, I feel like that's a good idea. Just wait till you can get a safe bear and let uh, Master Party get a little bit of a push going, maybe bot lane to force someone else out there, get get at least Swain shown on the map so they know where people are before they try and attempt this bear. Uh, there still is the level advantage for Into the Dark. He does have the extra level, so he has that extra damage on his smite. So it, it could be very, very risky if Southwest Baptist decided to try and take a Baron without having proper vision or without having Into the Dark dead. As we continue into now our 25th minute of the match, that will be the second drag being taken. This time it will go over to SBU as the first one that Moundrake did go into the hands of University of Delaware. But so far, it certainly feels like these last few minutes have been at a much slower pace. It feels like SBU have just not really wanted to, not really tried to force any play that isn't the Baron. Yeah, it, it makes sense that they want to go for the Baron, but it, it, it also doesn't make sense that they're not pushing top lane with this Caitlyn or, or, or something like that, because she has three items. Like, this is a rapid fire cannon, and here comes another fight. Into the dust, it goes right on in. He does have two members, the entirety of his ball lane at his back, but quick dart binding. We're gonna make sure that engage has absolutely nothing left in the gas tank. As, yeah, once again, they just fall on back. They are waiting for the side of Delaware to just make a play onto them. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a relatively safe way to play. Uh, they're they're already ahead. They kind of can wait for their waves to push. They now have wave control in all three lanes except for mid lane. As Swain tried to take it out there, they, they, this is what they need to do: kind of safe and steady, play around their Caitlyn. Caitlyn is their focal point. Don't let Caitlyn die. And let Caitlyn kill everyone. That's basically what the game plan is for Southwest Baptist from here on out because she does so much damage. Rapid fire cannon, static shiv, IE, and now they caught out into the dust. Yeah, they got the impale onto him directly during the E, so he has absolutely no chance of making it out. Let's bounce just isn't far enough, and now Dr. Santa is going to be able to collect the credit for this death, but does go over and to Tainaga now. Tain now. With the jungler gone, there is a Baron on the board. Three members still. Harrison does a lot of damage over that wall, but yeah, unable to land it on anyone just yet. We'll have to see how risky Delaware is willing to get for this one. Already down to that 3k mark. Someone's going to have to go in if they want to try to steal it. There's the engage. Nightsail tries to go over the wall, but he's going to get bound up immediately, and Baron goes on over with the kill. The Southwest Baptist University. Yeah, kind of a desperate attempt there. Only the Rakan goes in, obviously. Can't really do a whole lot else. Easy black shield onto the Titan Dog, making sure he can smite out the Baron. And now, and now we see the Caitlyn push get even scarier, because now Caitlyn has Baron. Most certainly so, and with that Baron buff, the thing that they've basically been building up to for so long now they need to get something done. The last 15 minutes, maybe not the last 15 minutes, but the last 7 minutes have just been spent stalling and stalling, and now you have everything you could possibly want. And on the other side, East Coast Carry is starting to get sizable. He's got two items. He's ready to start these fights, and all it takes now is one good engage on the side of Delaware just to completely turn this game around. Yeah, it, it's possible, but uh, I feel like it's getting... The, the, the light is fading for Delaware, though, because despite the fact that uh, this uh, Zaya now has two items, uh, Caitlyn has almost four, because she's already working on her armor-piercing item down there now. Almost four items completed on her, and here comes Into the Dusk again. Yeah, he's looking for the engagement. He's going to find absolutely nobody. He's going to impale Dark Darkbinding lands as well, and Dr. Santa immediately kills off Into the Dusk. Has absolutely no pass to fall back on. Ace is going to be targeting on East Coast Carry, but he's going to have to use the Feather Storm to get on out of that one, but that is now so much gone. Dr. Santa is going to be on the front line. He gets knocked up, but he's going to flash on out there as another kill goes on as well. Rado God's going to be paying the next price, but there's Dr. Santa on the front line again. It doesn't matter. He finds the kill. Double kill going for Dr. Santa and for SBU. Only two members left to defend, and Harrison and East Coast carry at this point, and this Baron will make the inhibitor pretty easy pickings. Ooh, a flash binding almost from DeLeo there on the East Coast carry would have ended the game, I'm sure. But uh, easy, they're just going to back up, take the inhibitor, going to go push bottom now, clear out some vision as well. Uh, Dr. Sander being a little bit ballsy, but I guess like when you're a three and a half item, Caitlyn, you, uh, you don't really care. So obviously just Leo though, he's going to be caught out here. potentially by multiple members, only one fourth HP remaining, but it's going to be just enough to make it on out of that fight. And oh, SBU, they need to be careful because Leo especially nearly falls in that play in the back end of a shot out from Jace, out from Harrison, but... Oz will finally sound the retreat as mid lane inhibitor goes down, bot lane T2 goes down, all in favor for SBU. Yeah, it, it, and this is now turning into please Harrison, or Harrison, please, please pick off the Caitlyn before a fight starts because that's the only way I see them getting out of this at this point. Uh, 
I don't know why Into the Dust tried to force that fight middle, because I just gave over the free mid uh, tower and uh, the inhibitor as well. So uh, dire straits for the side of Delaware here, as Dr. Santa does complete up that Lord Dominic's regard and is looking to just uh, continue cruising along here, as he has four items and the Vampire Acceptor already. So he's just... A devastating monster. This is exactly, actually, I want to just point it out. Is like this is what Reckless did earlier today uh, as Fnatic played Salka. He got really far ahead on the Trisana, and then his team just plays around him, keeps him safe, and lets him do all the work. And that's pretty much what's happening here for the side of Southwest Baptist. Doctor Sen is huge on this Caitlyn. They're just trying to keep him safe and let him do all the damage because he has no real. Yeah, we see me engage on once more. Black Shield is nearby, and so this will be taking that out. But Doctor Sen is going to drop so incredibly low just by the hand of Harrison and East Coast Carry. And I mean, you can try all you want, but certainly it's definitely hard to peel a Caitlyn who is just constantly in that front line, but Delaware never actually able to convert on any of these opportunities. He will be pushing up the mid lane with minions pushing through the mid with a super minions currently spawning into this. He goes in once again, finds absolutely no one to get impaled for his troubles. Doesn't get, even get the chance to get the lots of bounce out of the way. East Coast carry gonna be targeted with the ace in the hole, but it's not gonna find its way through all those members. But top tower will be going down as well as members just continue to fall on the side of Southern Southwest Baptist. They're gonna be feel pretty happy about this, but Justin gonna be engaged on Zonia's hourglass finally comes on through. Night Cell lands multiple members on the dazzle on the backside, but he also jumps directly in the path of that very very deadly dark binding. Does pay the price that as well as now two members are down. There's the engage, but once again, Dr. Santa gets picked off. But no man on Harrison means that there is going to be absolutely no response. Rito God's gonna be the next one to fall as the top lane tower goes down as well. Titan Dog falls down, trying to get on East Coast carry, but now Dr. Santa, he is unleashed. Tries to 50 caliber net <laughs> forward for the kill, but doesn't quite find it. Dark Shield gonna be just enough for now. Just needs a few more shots, but doesn't quite find it. It's actually, he's just going to take on everyone in a 1v1 situation. 9, 2, and 11. Four items completed. He just does so much damage right now. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty much disgusting. As, as any time they try to engage him, Black Shield comes out and he just kills Zack, who is probably the tankiest member of Delaware's side. Just shoots him in the face like it doesn't matter. Taking turrets, everything like that. The Vampire Scepter, the life steal he has right now, makes it so he doesn't care if he gets poked. Because Caitlyn Kurtz that's every tower gone. Fast. Black Shield on Dark Santa, but he's in the middle of absolutely everyone. Will he be able to make it out of this one? But DeLeo finds it Dusk on the backside, and yes, Santa's just able to kill anyone he so touches. Uh, maybe we'll be falling, not just yet, but one member goes on down. But Super Minions are going to end this game off at the 32 minute mark. SBU looking pretty dominant in game number one. Yeah. I feel, I honestly want to say, I feel partially that it is a draft decision there that kind of came to bite uh, Delaware in the butt, but well played by the side of Southwest Baptist. Again, just getting ahead on their ADC and just playing around it to the T, basically. Maybe a little bit over aggressive on the Caitlyn a couple times, just getting too much damage taken, but very, very solid, uh, pretty calm, steady win from the side of Southwest Baptist. Certainly so, and it just felt like a little bit of a lack of execution on the side of Delaware. They set themselves up for this great engage style comp where, I mean, sure, there was the Morgana there, but killing the Caitlyn should have been basically the easiest thing for that composition to do. You have the Jace, you have the Rakan, you have a Zaya, you have a Zac for crying out loud, but it just felt like they were never able to convert on that, so uh, we'll be following on on that one, and we will have to see if the draft will change to suit their play styles as we get ready for game number two, but we will be throwing it over to a little bit of an intermission as we do get loaded and ready for game number two.